cool. Well, I'm going to just kind of overview today's topic and um, talk a little bit about what we're going to be discussing today. So um, feel free to just unmute yourself. This is going to be a conversation. I'm going to be giving you tips and tricks on how to be really marketing yourself as a brand, as a real estate brand. So that is going to include some technology. We're going to be talking a little bit about your value proposition, who your target audience is, logos, a lot. So, um, but the really cool thing about today is that you're going to be walking away with 10 ways to do it. And I'm going to just make it super simple for you all so that you can kind of get into this mindset of how you're selling yourself now and really like perhaps um, getting back into fine tuning what, what you're really up to as far as branding goes. Is anybody here on this call like really clear with um, how they're branding themselves and who their who their audience is? I know Susie, you are. Um, anybody else here? Uh, Mary, were you gonna say something? No, I know. I mean, that's the whole reason I'm on this call is to get some yeah. tips in terms of what I can do to improve. Yeah, uh, my you know image, marketing, and and all that wonderful stuff. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Susie, do you, can you do me a favor and just share with the audience here, like who, who, you know, your vision of who your market is and how you brand yourself and just kind of a, a 30 second overview. Perfect. You bet. Uh, And I mean, it's taken me years to get here and I still have such a long way to go. So by no means am I like there which is why I sit on Leslie's calls as well. Um, So I've been in the business 20 years. Um, I took over an agent's business who had had a 23 year database back in 2008. And she specialized in seniors. And so as a result and criteria of me taking over her database, I also had to get my SRES and specialize in that arena as well. So I have uh, had a specialty working with seniors since then it is an incredible um, demographic to work in. And so a lot of my um, events that I do, um, the the branding that I do, the newsletters specifically go to speak to that demographic group. 62% of of my business last year came from uh, individuals over the age of 62. And so it's a really wonderful incredible group of people to work with. Uh, And so I just continue to try to expand that out. I just recently got my um, CPRES, which is probate specialist, a probate specialist. When you're working with older people, very often you're working with estates and probate. And so I thought, you know what, it's probably time that I probably get this as well. So I'm starting to segue into, okay, what does that look like? So that's a, a whole other sort of stream that complements the senior community that I'm in. And then I also am a luxury agent. So sometimes they're diametrically opposed and sometimes they're not. Um, I I do, I do a lot of marketing uh, around luxury as well. And thanks Leslie, she's taught me and I'm using command to do a lot of that stuff. Awesome. Thanks for that, Susie. I love helping you all win. Good. That's why I'm here. So with that being said, Thank you again for sharing, Susie, because I think it kind of opens up just part of this conversation and really defining, you know, what sets you apart from others, whether that be a specific um, knowledge base, uh, customer service, a unique uh, expertise in a particular type of demographic type of property. So what we're going to get into is literally the 10 steps to establish a trusted real estate brand. I like to also say beyond the brand because you are the brand. So today we're going to discuss like who you are and how you're really truly showing up and what kind of information are you providing, whether that be strategic or just overall overall arcing messages that aren't capturing the audience that you truly want. So um, know your target audience Um, and that this is just a great segue like we had discussed is understand who your ideal clients are. So Susie, thank you for sharing. You are very clear on like who your ideal uh, clients are. 
And what type of services are you going to then provide for them? Um, I like to break this down pretty easily just because sometimes we kind of overthink this, this part. You all already know it, but I'm just going to shout out a couple of, of examples. First time home buyers, right? That's a specific audience that they just don't know what they don't know. And they have, they have no idea what to expect. And so they're like these cute little puppy dogs looking for help, right? They need, they need some guidance. They need some training. They need um, some coddling, hand holding, right? And so they're looking to you to provide that experience and that service. And if you're not going to do it, or if you're not shining from the rooftops that you have that experience, then they're going to be hiring somebody else. Okay. Um, luxury property seekers. Uh, this is again, a topic that we talk about a lot. There are, also, there are also some luxury pockets here in Colorado that you all are aware of uh, geographically. And also whether that be neighbors, but, you know, particular neighborhoods, commercial investors. We don't really talk about commercial a lot, although we do have a lot of commercial agents in our um, ecosystem. It's still something to um, consider. So really when we talk about your specific target audience, maybe it's none of these. So what I'd like to do is offer you some time um, after today's call is to go back into your database and truly look at your top three lead sources of who you've been doing business with right now. So last year, out of all the transactions that you that you did, think about those families, those people, um, and where they where you actually met them, what were they seeking, and what kind of life event were they having? So life events could be we're having babies, we're downsizing, our, our children are off to college, we're upgrading, we're looking for our forever home, um, we're looking for retirement homes because we're at that age where we just need a like one level ranch, we don't want any stairs. Like those are life-changing kind of things that happen or occur in a real estate transaction. That's why people need to buy or sell. This also kind of goes into like a pain point. So thinking about the pain points of those particular scenarios of why people buy or sell real estate and then matching and getting really clear with who that demographic is, who is that target audience that you're actually also already helping. Nine times out of 10, you're going to really discover that there's a common theme or a theme in that database that you already have. So get curious and, 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 and understand like <clears throat> age group, can also, you know, go into this kind of conversation. Those people in your database, what, what age are they at? Um, where are they living right now? Where are they in their life? You, you all know this because you are in, in some sort of relationship with them. They know you. And so really identifying that who that target audience is key. Now we really talk about designing a logo and a slogan. So we talk about logos all the time. I know a lot of agents can get like, just they overthink the process. It has to be perfect, but really what, what it amounts to is like, know your tar target audience first, and then your logo should be visible, visually appealing and recognizable and a slogan that will catch that audience to understand what you're up to. Logo is really the last thing that you create. I think a lot of agents kind of jump into the state, the real estate game and they're like, I need a logo. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you need you. <laughs> you need to get more training and get that person in your corner to help you grow. Whoever that is in your market center, hire a coach, whoever it is, take the classes, get your feet wet, find that expert, that person in your market center that can give you that experience, do open houses right? Once you discover and find who your niche is, then the logo comes later. But when you're in this game already and you want to kind of include that logo and a slogan, it's really about including a value and a promise. So think about a promise that is a value or experience to your, your service to that person. And it's kind of like every time they interact with that with you, you are the brand beyond the logo. Does that make sense? So really when we talk about beyond branding or beyond the brand, it's you, you are the, you are the brand. And also you're beyond it because you're providing an experience every single time 
that also coincides with what you're up to, your brand. So I'm going to give you a couple of like famous slogans to just kind of get your wheel turning. FedEx, when it absolutely, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight, that's their slogan. Their slogan. Slogan. It's a logo and a slogan. Um, <laughs> BMW, the ultimate driving machine, right? Disney, the happiest place on earth. That's their slogans. So you think about those brands and you think about those experiences and you know exactly what I'm talking about. I like light up when I think about Disney because it just brings up back all these memories, right? And so um, perhaps you you drive a BMW and you do feel like you're driving the ultimate machine. So identity and learning who your target audience is is really key to understanding your slogan. So like really putting it out there to speak to that audience. And also every, every slogan that I gave you is actually an experience. So FedEx, when it, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight, that's an experience. Like they're giving you the experience of quick convenience delivery. BMW is giving you an experience of an ultimate driving machine. And then Disney is also giving you the experience of the happiest place on earth. Don't you feel that? And so when we talk about slogans, put that experience into your slogan. Susie, put that experience into your slogan for, you know, retirees or people who are going through that transition. Start writing it out in one statement. So, yes. So I think I've maybe kind of screwed mine up. And um, I'm, I'm not sure it communicates experience, but we just redid our branding. So we're the foot group. And then under it, we say real estate wealth advisors. And then my slogan for years and years and years has been um, in step with, in step because of foot, in step with your real estate needs, dot, 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 because life moves you. So I don't know, and, yeah. and I and I work with other groups because my yeah. son is in business. So he covers the first time home buyers, maybe the millennials. So we're, we're kind of all encompassing. Yeah. And so I, I don't know quite, I guess I'm, yeah, I don't know quite where to go from. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's reevaluating what kind of experience you're providing, right? So that and, says really nothing about the kind of experience I'm providing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So this is good. This is good. It's, good. it's getting you in the thought process. I could see that. Great. Um, and you may not discover it today. It could be just a time to put some time into it to, to get really clear. I was able to um, interview Stacey Souls, who runs a mega team. And she literally has had like a reinvention of her demographic and her target audience. Like she's like, Oh my God, I was doing it all all wrong for years. And now I'm just discovered, I like, I just rediscovered that I need to um, get really, get really clear with who my, who my customer is and like what they need all the time. Right. And um, so it's okay. You know, it's okay to go back and rethink about things. All right. So uh, let's go into now, where was I? Let's talk a little bit about identity. So we talked about a memorable design and a logo and a, also a slogan. Um, and we talked about that the logo doesn't always have to come first. It's really about understanding your target audience first, then eventually getting to a logo and a slogan because those two, those two go hand in hand. Um, identity. So brand identity is a collection of all elements that a company creates to portray the right image to its customer, consumer, and it's the way a brand presents itself to the public and distinguishes itself from its competitors. Logo, packaging, tone, colors, personality. So a brand, brand identity is a collection. I'll just say that again. Brand identity is a collection of all elements that a company creates to portray the right image to the, to the consumer. All right. So getting clear with your identity, how are you portraying yourself to the consumer right now? And what kind of um, 
logo or pa packaging or tone or colors are you using? That is really key to branding yourself. It's, it has to be very consistent. Consistency is key with this. So if you're continuing to like play with different Canva, I'm just going to give an example, just a simple example. If you're playing with different Canva templates and you overdo the templates and they have different colors every time that you're putting it up on social, people get confused about your brand identity. They don't, it's not recognizable. So the more that you have like a, a set tone, color, set um, font, even people are going to understand and see that that's, that's Liz, that's Martha, that's Luke, that's Mandy. Um, that's Rachel. I see all you all on the call without your videos on. It's okay. But the more the merrier with your videos on just saying, um, <laughs> so yeah, so it's one of those things where the more that you're consistent with it, people are going to start recognizing you and that is branding and people overthink it. So don't overthink it. It also shows your personality and who you are. The other thing that I want to bring up is, um, so, so far we've talked about identity, your unique selling proposition. So what sets you apart from other, um, people, whether that be your local knowledge, your customer service, your unique, unique expertise. Um, number two, we talked about knowing your target audience. Number three, we talked about, um, a logo and a slogan, including identity. And then number four is also professional photography. So when we talk about branding, we talk about all those things and then we start putting our marketing out there, right? And so professional photography is huge. Headshots, listing photos, you name it, everything that you're doing with a camera, hire a professional to do it. Um, so that you can create those high quality images and it shows the professionalism on your digital marketing and print marketing so that people perceive the value of your services. How many times have you seen an agent online take photos of a home with their phone? And you're like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Right? The perceived value of that is quite low, is it not? Right. And so thinking about it from the consumer's point of view, how are you perceiving your value online through the type of photography that you have? Is it high definition? Are you, um, do you have like a professional headshot? Maybe it's time to re retake it. Like I, t I retook mine um, a year ago. And if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see it. But I had so many comments on it and it made me look like the person that I am. <laughs> you know, you're like, that wasn't me like 10 years ago. This is who I am now, you know? So think about just like how you portray yourself um, up through your headshot because people want to know you authentically. Um, there's so many agents that out there that are still using the old image of them like 10 years ago. And I hate to say it, we age. This is just nature. <laughs> and then people are like, oh my gosh, you look totally different than what I saw you, how you, how you portrayed yourself online. So really... It's all about the image, the authenticity and the professionalism, no matter what you're doing, because that's how you're branding yourself. And that is, that goes beyond what just a logo and a slogan is. Does that make sense? So invest in professional photography. I cannot stress that enough. Um, the next one is develop a consistent brand voice. I love this because this goes back into writing property descriptions, how you're posting on social media, um, your tonality and style, ensure that those are consistent. This helps creating a coherent brand experience for your audience. So again, like I bring up the agent out there that's taking photos of the, the home with their camera, like don't be that person and how you portray yourself online. Um, and also speak authentically online too, because that's how people get to know you like you trust you. It shows that you're human. You don't want to, you don't want to be too salesy, but you also want to be professional, right? And of course we know don't be unprofessional. That's an easy thing to do or ask yourself, am I being unprofessional in this post? I like to say on Facebook, and I've said this a couple of times already is like, I think about Facebook as bringing somebody into having dinner with me. I don't talk about politics. I don't talk about religion and I don't talk about anything controversial because what will happen is online digital 
um, in those three topics, you can really turn somebody off. You can actually lose clients. So think about Facebook as bringing somebody in, having a, a sit down dinner. Okay. Um, so that goes back to brand, your, your voice and, and how you are online. A brand voice refers to the distinct personality and tone of communication used by a brand in its messaging. It encompasses the words you use, the style writing, and the emotions evoked through that writing. All right. The next one is leverage social, social media. We've talked about this plenty of times. Don't post and ghost. You are the walking billboard. You are the digital billboard online. For those of you who feel like you're like, I can't put my face out there because of all these reasons, you got to get over yourself. And I probably talked about this last week, but this still goes back into branding and being consistent. So share those property photos, share industry news, show local events, use those platforms to engage with your audience and showcase your experience and your expertise. All the while, remember your target audience and who you're speaking to. Cool. And then offer value through marketing. So start a blog, release any videos where you offer tips for buyers and sellers and discuss market trends, give neighborhood tours. This positions you as an expert and a value, valuable resource. So as you think about who your target audience is, what kind of value would they need in order to make the right decision in order to know that this decision that they're going to make in buying or selling is the right one. Perhaps you're going to discuss the community around a particular home that you're selling. The person that lives in that home has already felt that convenience of that community. The future buyer has not. So how are you going to portray the community around that home that you're selling so that the future buyer understands the amenities, the local events that are happening um, the public schools that are in that community. So I'm just getting a little bit granular here to get your mind thinking. So showcase that content through marketing and offer those tips to buyers and sellers so that they know exactly your expertise. Speak your expert. Speak as an expert. Um, if you're not following me on Realify, go follow me. It's R-E-A-L-I-F-Y. I do um, daily masterminds with Nick Baldwin every day. And I'll just type in the Facebook group's name here. And you guys can see a lot of this content is what we were teaching already. Um, and then I'll also drop down. Thanks, Mary. Um, I'll also drop the link so you can join. But yesterday, we, I believe we went over this is just, um, I lost my train of thought. It was uh, being that local expert Oh, the, the guide versus the hero. If you go on to my Facebook group, you'll, you'll, you'll re uh, watch that session of what a guide versus a hero means. A lot of agents out there that are trying to brand themselves that are new in the market, that are new to real estate are kind of being the hero in their social posts or being that person that's like boasting about getting somebody getting under contract. That's like a hero. Like I got somebody under contract today. Yay. That's a hero. A guide would be, I helped um, my clients get under contract through all these different elements because I guided them in such a way that they knew um, what to expect. Probably wasn't the best example, but go and listen to that, um, that recording because it really goes back to your brand and your voice online and how you're being, because people look for a guide, they don't look for a hero. And so young, younger professionals tend to do that in, in different industries. They want, they show, they show up as a hero all the time. It's really about competence. So the competence also goes back to experience. So if you're not feeling competent in a particular topic in the real estate um, industry, go get competent in it so that you can speak to it and be a guide, not a hero. Huge difference. Um. So showcase, and another way to showcase that you can be uh, a guide is testimonials. Have other people speak for you. And this also just shows your competence, your credibility, your expertise, your specific experience of how you've helped them and who they are. 
This all goes back to your target audience. So showcase testimonials on social, Google, Yelp, Zillow, display these prominently on your website and all of your marketing materials. Because how are people going to know who you are without somebody speaking for you? This again goes beyond the brand because you're providing an experience. And then um, network continuously. I know we talk about a lot, but join local business associations, real estate groups, community events, build those relationships within and outside the industry so you can help lead um, re to referrals and partnerships. And then finally, stay updated and to continue learning. Something that I just already touched upon, the real estate market evolves constantly as we know. So stay updated with the latest industry news, especially now. Buyers are super reluctant. Sellers are the same. They're like, when is it gonna be the perfect timing, right? We know that there is no perfect time. The time is actually now. <laughs> So stay updated through industry news, technology, and market trends. Continuously upgrade your skills through those courses and certifications because that will help you be the guide in your brand that will show your expertise to your target market. And then all of that, with all of this knowledge that I gave you today, then you place that on all your marketing. Then you place that on all your, your um, social but again, uh, I'll leave um, what I'll do here in this group because we did touch upon this and I can even um, teach the entire kind of mastermind around it. It's a guide versus a hero one. So give me one second. First of all, here's my Facebook group with Nick. So go grab that and then Customers aren't looking for a hero, they're looking for a guide. Let me grab this one for you. Just give me one second. Um, I don't know if it's gonna actually allow me to share the link, hold on. While I'm doing this, who here wants to just unmute themselves and kind of tell me, give me feedback on today's topic, what's come up for you? I just wanted to put it out there. Hi, this is Mandy Martinez. Um, Hi, Mandy. Just put it out there to use like the AI features that are available these days. Uh, yeah. You can do slogans. You can put in basic words that kind of relate to you or or draw something up and who you are and what you want to present. Um, but if you put it in, it can create the slogan. It's pretty yeah. neat. Yeah, that's a great tip. Absolutely. If you get like really clear on who your target audience is, you could go to chat GPT and type in, create a slogan for um, first time home buyers. We'll just put it out there. Yeah, I love that. Thanks, Mandy. I like, I like that tip. Absolutely. Who else here would like to unmute themselves and just kind of have a discussion with me? Feedback, thoughts. Hi, Liz. Hi, thank you so much. This has already been really informative. I Something that comes up for me is working with often the people that I'm having conversations with are first time home buyers and I am not a home buyer myself yet. So as much as that is very much a goal of mine and the ideally very near future, it is, it can be a little bit of a challenge to try to show how I can separate myself apart and brand myself in a way that's not experienced directly with going through the process other than of course, going through classes and testing and continual yeah. courses too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's a, a valid point. And I know that you're not alone in that, that there are a lot of agents that are still not home, um, homeowners. And so I, I mean, I would suggest to talk to any seasoned agent that has, um, experience with first time home buyers or get with somebody who specifically focuses, like if they have like, I would just put a message out there on, on like my internal market, Facebook, uh, Facebook market. Am I saying market? Facebook internal market center page. And I would say anybody here works solely with uh, first time home buyers. If so, I would love to sit down and just learn a little bit from you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Because I think every first time home buyer has different obstacles and challenges. One thing that comes up is a lot are loans, right? Mm -hmm. And just the precautionary things of what to do and not to do when you're actually in the loan process, they don't know that. And so um, that's just kind of a thought that I have right now. But that's what I would do. Um, and of course, like Liz, I'm not going to say, well, Liz, go buy a home. <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> of course. Now, now is the time to buy. Now is the time. That is true. If I could, I would. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if anybody else wants to offer Liz any advice or support, that would be great. Anybody else want to chime in here? Thank you, though. That's super helpful. Yeah. Okay, good. What's today, Claire? Oh, did you find value out of today's call? Put it in the chat. Yes, no. Leslie, uh, yes. I always get great nuggets from you. So thank you for pouring yeah. into me and pouring into us. You know, my biggest aha from today, which I'm so grateful for, you framing this for me is being a guide versus a hero. Yeah. That's huge. Because one of the things for me is I'm very uncomfortable on Facebook talking about myself and any accomplishments associated with me. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm bragging. Right. But framing it differently may actually get me posting a few things on Facebook more where it's about what I provided and the experience I provided versus the hero piece of it. So yeah. thank you. That was You're a welcome. huge, that's, that's huge for me. I've got big stars around that. Yay. Good. Thank you. Go, yeah. go listen to the guide versus hero uh, video. Um, it was this week. It's about three videos down on the Realify page and I'll, okay. we'll go through like a full 30 minute session about it. It's really cool. Um, the content that I'm grabbing a lot of this from is, um, I think it's called brand. I'll grab the book. It's not in my, I don't know where it is. I think it's in my room, but I read it every now and then for marketing. Um, and if anybody wants to know about that book, just shoot me an email. It's Leslie Jackson at kw.com. Um, and it talks about the brand versus the hero. And I think I, what I see a lot out on the on the web is, you know, look at me. And we're it's falling on deaf ears. Like consumers are like, yeah, look at you. <laughs> so, wow. But what we're doing is we're forgetting what they need. So really guiding them proactively in the process or getting them in the thought process of what could happen in the process, right? So cool. Good. I'm, I'm glad you found some value out of that. Anybody else want to share their ahas or feedback here in, in today's session? Okay, cool. I like to take these classes a little bit differently every now and then, just because we could teach technology all day long. Um, I am still going to offer some technology classes and, and continue to talk about tech. Tech is always going to be evolving around us. And so social media is something that we discussed today. Uh, I'm not always going to talk about command just because I think that you all need more than that. So um, if there's a specific area or topic that you would like for me to cover, shoot me an email. I'd be more than happy to, to accommodate and discuss something. Uh, let's see, Martha, were you going to say something? Oh, no, no. Okay, cool. Um, what is next week's topic? Do, 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 do. I should know this already. Sorry, guys. Uh, next week topic is turn your lead gen into something you love. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about lead gen and burnout, how to prevent it, um, kind of have like a real conversation around it. And then technology, what kind of tech you're using. So yeah, come, come invite more people. Uh, I sent an email out to the entire region, share that email out with somebody that needs it. Um, that link, today's link is a reoccurring link for every single Thursday. So just, just save this link, place it in your calendar at 11 AM every Thursday. And, uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for everything. Bye. Talk to you Thank soon. You. Thank you so much. So beneficial today. I'll definitely be Thank back. Thank you. Bye. Thank you everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks.